Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Welcome back to the Nice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. This is part two of a 50 part series. No. <laughs> Almost. Continuing coverage. That's right. We're doing our top thousand games. Top thousand games. That'd be our hundred part coverage. The thing is, you could do that, but that would be scary. When you're at 1,000, it's like, no. I played this once. I So I actually. Not for him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. No, I, I, I go. I forget how far I went this year. I, I, went, I went to like 130, 140. Uh -huh. There comes a point. Okay, that's a lie. I went to at least 159. I went to 175. But there comes a point at that, at 175 where, where you, you see start that? Someone stuff. has an avatar of that face I made in the last top 10 video. Oh, yes! That's horrifying. <laughs> that's quick. I could have lived with never seeing that. All right. Your own fault. Your brother said if you made that's, that face, look, it that's would it. freeze It'll that freeze way. It'll freeze forever. And now it's on, uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Wow. You went far back, but at that point, the game's Well, there comes a point. Like, when you're at 372 yeah. to 373, mm -hmm. even now, we always say there's like 75, 76. Sure, yeah. The difference is, yeah. It's, 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 it's negligible. It's mm -hmm. how I felt for that very moment. Right, right. Right. Okay, anyway, if you're watching this, this is our top 100 games of all time. Um, and uh, if you're watching this, our Dice Tower Kickstarter is live. Live, 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 live. Go to DiceTowerKickstarter.com if you want to support us. Check it out. There's lots of cool things and ways to back us there. Look, if you want to say, I backed the Dice Tower Kickstarter in the first three hours, you can still do that. But by the end of this, you can't do that anymore. However, I want them to watch this. Can you multitask? You can watch the video and back. Every time we make a good choice, something you like, add another pledge level on there. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Anytime you buy I really stupid, like that game. Add right. 10 more bucks. Yes, oh, well, I look, like that. Okay. We could we can be done by the end of this video if we want to do that. Oh, wow. I would actually like to, to fund this week. There's a lot of reasons. Yeah. But the main one... It's Kenny's not in the studio. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. So no air horn. Right. It would be nice to know that that we we have We're made our goal. Yes. Assuming no one else has taken up the mantle of the air horn man. He might have asked someone to do it. Oh, do we trust everyone in the office? Let me put dun, you this way. Dun, dun. I don't trust. We trust certainly Kenny. do not. Okay, here's who I trust. I trust you because because you don't like the air horn. That I don't much. like sounds. <laughs> So That's I think right. That's why he wants to go to space. And no one else. Yeah, you're it. Not a single other person. <laughs> you're it. Mm. Every single one of us would blow that air. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one of us. I love it. It's celebratory. Um, okay, so before we get into today's um, list, which is 90 to 81, mm -hmm. uh, I want to give a quick shout out to um, Pub Meeple, which is a website I, I used it. I think you I did used too. it as well. Yes. Which lets you just stick in them all in and you rank them. It, it gets. A little tedious after a while because it's it's like I don't know what four hundred times you got to yeah, do it. Yeah, at the beginning when you put them in, they're like, "This will take four hundred and seventy comparisons." Are you sure? Yes. Sure, yeah. but I mean, it's not so bad. I, I kind of do it while I'm watching TV or something. You just hit the left to right arrows, and it's a pretty neat thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way, like, if you want to rank your kids, you can throw in all your kids. Do right, left. <laughs> That's the quick list for me. <laughs> You know what I do? I, use, I do the old uh, arcade game trick where I just take a pencil and I do the tick 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 I put, you know, you remember that from the arcades, right? No. If you ever had to do button mashing, you take the pencil and you're hitting the both, of, both of those buttons really fast. You never went to arcades. I went to arcades, but I never had quarters. I just watched oh. other people play. Neither did I. <laughs> I did see people do the pencil thing though. Okay. I've never heard of this pencil really? thing. Wow, really? Chat, back me up. You know the pencil. You know the pencil arcade trick. 
People here are not 70 years old. I feel old. like you couldn't press the button hard enough with the, the, the strength of a, a 12-year-old's skinny fingers. You'd be shocked. Wow, You'd okay. You'd be shocked. Okay. So it was mostly, yeah, I can't, I'm trying to remember the games, but there are some games where you're just doing really fast button mashing on two buttons. Okay, this is the most boring conversation. This is fantastic. Let's go. Add $10 now. <laughs> That's right. Mike said something. Let's go to number nine. Track and field. That's the game, yes. Hmm. I am not winning this game. <laughs> I'm trying to figure. It looked like there were two little pixels between the nine and the zero. Did he cut apart his pieces to do that? Probably. If he did do anything funny, it would have been graphically. No. Okay. You That's know, true. He's very good with Mike, his. Uh, Mike plays in. Yeah, well, Special Mike also packs. knows how to hit buds with pencils, okay? I do. Back in his day, that's the only way. Now mm -hmm. you can just tell, like, your virtual assistant to hit the button for you. <laughs> that's right. All right, my number 90 is new to my list, as many of the games in this, as I said, in the oh. back part of the list. Before okay. you go, though. Yes. Let's do some shout-outs. Let's shout some people oh, out. Oh, shout. I want to say shout. thanks to the Neon Polytechnic Board Games Club. I love Richard that Hewitt, name. Hewitt mm -hmm. Sean Humphrey, Magnia Rune Einersdotier, and Axel Jow Einerson, to Mark Martello, to Kelly Cairo, to Lee Nicholas, to Brent Rebecca Tyler Sam and Hannah, and to Joshua Fens Fessenden and Isabel Ketavid. Mm. That's a lot of cool now. names. That's a lot of cool names. Also, uh, thank you, Juso, for the super chat. He wants to hear more old people tricks. From <laughs> more Mike. old people tricks. Had to teach these kids. Yeah, that's you right. Young whippersnappers. Now it's, it's finally my time. Tell us more stories. We're back in the day. Isn't that, isn't that, Mike? Isn't that the old people's uh, dating app, OurTime.com? <laughs> <laughs> what is that really a thing? I think it's really a thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. knowledge. Stops at farmers only. Oh, he, he's the only one who knew about it. Here's, oh, a, well. here's an old people trick. I don't know if you're aware of this, uh -huh. but daily fiber supplements now are available in gummy form. Yes. No Teeth no longer required. <laughs> there you go. My, Everything's, better. Everything's better in gummies. All right. My number 90 is a trick-taking game. Shocking, shocking. It's a Japanese trick-taking game, even more shocking. Wow. And it's the title of it is I a German word. So this is an international game. It's a hit. This is an international game. This game is called Schadenfreude. Okay. Schadenfreude. This is a really cool trick-taking game with two hooks to a traditional trick-taking formula. Basically two, two hooks. Oh, how do I never, I've never played this game, well, Mike. Well, it's, it's coming on what the cruise. What are the hooks? The hooks are that you don't want to be the highest in the trick to win. You want to be second highest in Correct. the trick to win. Okay. And... Um, you you see that little score tracker, you want to be as close to 40 without going over 40 to win the game. And so what's really fun is that as people win tricks, right, they are going to be moving forward, 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 and then at a certain point you want to stop. Because you want to get right close to 40, but then you don't want to win any more tricks. Okay. And so people can start dumping cards to you to try to get those people to, to get tricks. Also, when you win a trick, you're placing them in number piles in front of you, mm. all right? There are some negative values, as you can see there. If you get two of the same number value, they basically cancel each other out. So you're trying to get single values of high numbers to get points. So it's just a really, really clever game, very simple to, to, to explain and play if you know, you know standard trick taking. Um, it's older, but not that old. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way the game looks. Also, why like is it called Schadenfreude? Because that's what you're trying to do. You're taking joy in getting pe making people go over 40. Oh, the, well, the somebody the out there this year, then, is having a great time with me. I just turned 40. You just turned 40. Let me... I'm not over 40 yet, Hey, though. Z, I'm going to, uh, I'll... I'll uh, still are we 40. counting days? No, we never do that. We don't count days. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send you a link for those fiber gummies. Anyone My number 90, Schadenfreude. I've never even heard of it. It sounds okay. No, it's great. Oh, okay. It sounds great. Thank you. Uh, you didn't sell me on that one, actually. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. That's okay. You didn't like Hund, either, and that's a fantastic I game. said Hund was fine. It's not on my top 100, but it's a good game. All right, my number this 90. Is better than a hound? You better believe it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My number 90 
is a the dice game of a game I've liked for a long time, and when the dice game came out, I pretty much immediately got rid of the original game. It's a pretty new game. Has not been on my list before somehow. I don't know why. Or wow, at least last game. year. Uh, it is Longshot, the dice game. Oh, yeah. Longshot, the dice game, manages to be... Manages to be like Longshot in many ways, but it's so much faster. It now utilizes a roll and write sort of interface in a way that made sense, mm -hmm. in a way that didn't feel gimmicky for the sake of being a roll and write. Yeah, that's it true. gave you the most fun part of Longshot. Oh, you know, betting on the horses and then picking the ones that are your horses during the race, which is kind of weird because. That's not how it works, but <laughs> you can purchase the horse, and then you both have special abilities and a specific horse to cheer for, but also that betting of, you know, hey, my horse isn't doing great, but number seven is? Cool. Let's go number seven. I'm, I'm putting money on, on that. Mm -hmm. This is a blast. Plays a big group. Um, if you're looking for a party game atmosphere in a game that is not a party game, really, Long shot, the dice game is is uh, you will not go wrong with this one. That's the way to go. And are you excited about the uh, the little mini pe whatever those the, the, those line of games Paco Games version of this called Bet? That's right. I forgot that that was coming mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I'm looking I am. forward to I that. I am excited for that. Yep. Uh, this Wait, this game says it's win. He, he said it's win. Maybe it's win. Bet would have been better. Sorry, Chris. Bet. Win. Well, yeah. Sorry, Chris. Handy. Doesn't he already have win. one that's called Bet? He needs to change that one. You I can call know. that one win and call this one bet. That's all I'm saying. How about loose, but L-U-S. <laughs> Just three letters. Loose. <laughs> anyway, that's my number 90, mm. Long Shot the Dice Game. My number 90 has been on my list for five years, and it is a game that Mike enjoys quite a bit and says it's great with five. Oh, really? And that is Smartphone. Yeah, this is... Because it really is great with five. Mm -hmm. I enjoy Smartphone. I like the theme which I mm -hmm. try to say all the time because I'm getting tired of trading in the Mediterranean, but there's more modern themes now. Yeah. But my favorite thing is really the beginning of each round, that yep. whole take your boards and put them on top of each other. That's such a fun mechanism. I'm surprised more games haven't stolen that. It's using a few things. I think uh, Fall of the Mountain King. Fall of the Mountain King does it. And Similar. Few, it's just such a fun mechanism and to sit there and manipulate these things. And it's actions. weird because everyone at the table is head down, but it's so interactive because really what you're doing is trying to guess what are everyone else doing and where do I want to be, right? right? So it's, it's yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. Smartphone. What the people say, Tom. The people's number 90 came on the list originally in 2012 at 17. Mm. In 2016, it fell off at 94. Okay. Uh, in 2021, it was 221. Woo. Then 154, then 130, and now up to 90. So That's it's getting better. Crazy. The game is it's somehow just... getting better. Well, it has an amazing second edition. Um, oh. And that is Eclipse. Oh. So the Eclipse yeah, special edition. Not what I, okay. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm saying the special edition, I think, is what brought, brought it back up. Because it really is a superior edition. And Eclipse is becoming more and more the Euro Gamers TI4. You know, mm -hmm. you have TI4. If you want to play the long Ameritrash one, if you want to play the long Euro one, it's Eclipse. Really quickly, I really wish we had a plushie for that little figure there. Oh, that, that cute cat with the yes, tentacles? The that space would cat. be great. That, that would be so such cute. a good plushie. Thanks for the, the super chat, Sebastian. Wants to know when your shout out is. Um, you could always email us. We, I write down the dates for them. Mm. Uh, and also a shout out from Warful Reviews. Smartphone is great with every boring game. Hmm. I don't know what not, that means. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> Eclipse, though, is your number 90. And actually, I was a little surprised to see it move up that far. Yeah, me too. Really, it's, it's back with a vengeance. Mm. It might be in the top 10 next year. There is actually several on this particular uh, thing that are n new um, mm. or have come up from the hundreds. Including right. the next one, which you'll find out shortly. Mm. Hilmar, Yavaldi, uh, is this a good game? Neither of it. It's an awesome game. Do you have an expansion for it? I have both of them, both Thinkwetler and Idavetler. Okay, and um, is it in your top 100? It is. It's number 
I get it. Look at that. Look at that Hillmar oh. flex. I've got a top 100 too. Hillmar uh -huh. is the Dice Tower uh, web guy. Built mm -hmm. our website for us. Yes. Oh, there we go. When the game is boring, you take out your smartphone. Okay. Got it. Also, no, you can't. All right. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things is when I'm teaching a game to look over and someone's doing this. I'm like, I love you too. <laughs> my number 89 is new to my list, but it's certainly not a new game. And it's been in many, many, many different varieties. It's been called many different things. Oh. Trash, rubbish, gar I don't know what. No. Oh. Yeah. Is that something I gave you? No, I don't think so. Loco. It's but my but I put Botswana. Really? This yes. is your top one. I'm. This game is so wow. good. It's so good. And the thing is, the f did you give me Botswana? No, I gave you Thor. Oh yeah, you did. You did, which is another version. Which is of this. an incredibly rare That's edition why of this. I didn't even like, put. I didn't even. Stupid rare. I, like I should have gotten money yeah, for it. I rare. tried. I tried. I tried giving I mean, you a salami sketches, sandwich. Go walks. Why are you putting this version on? I haven't even seen this one. This is my favorite version. This is the version I have. Other than well, I can't say my favorite. My favorite I is one Thor. With classic animals with cool little. No, that's crab. That's for children. These are look at those wooden animal meeples, and then the cards. The higher the number gets, the closer the animal comes to you. I give you the cards, but I think the plastic animals are better. Plastic what if I animal? combine them? Plastic, uh, plant, plastic animals are garbage. This is fantastic. So <laughs> Botswana, Loco, <laughs> Thor, whatever you want to call it, is a simple, could not be more simple. You've got six cards, zero to five, and you're placing those cards in columns and collecting an animal. And what's going to happen, what you're trying to do, is have the animals that you've got the most of have the highest card because the last card that's played is whatever the value is for those animals. And I think what five is what triggers it basically whenever there's five cards in a column, I think no. that's what triggers the the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's good. You you tell those rules and you're like, what? Where's the game? And it's there. And it's one of those games where the more you play it, you kind of start developing metas and stuff. It's just so fun. The ratio of rules to fun. That's Why is there a score track? Because this is my version of Botswana. No, but do you play multiple <laughs> rounds? Of yeah, that? you play, I think, three that rounds. That wasn't in the original game. Okay. Three to rounds. make a score track? Hmm? I thought it doesn't come in there. No, no, it comes oh, in okay. there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you no, made it, it comes like, because I made it. That's it's right, yeah, in yeah. there. Oh, yeah. wait, did you hear that, Hell, That's my favorite version. I heard that. It's your Thor back, dude. I don't know. I could have sold that for probably like $80. 89 Maybe. I, I, yes, that's my favorite version because it's so special to me, but... Um, is that a Japanese printing of this? Yes. That looks cool. I and it's like currently it's, available, believe it or I not. I really Where? like it a lot. Amazon Japan. Done. Mm -hmm. I like How it a lot. I just, I'm just surprised available? it's in your top 100. Thor's not available. It's such a, it's such a, a slight game, but it's a great one. It really is. I just <laughs> played the lights out of this game this year. I played it so many times this year. Third, 23. Get the light out of here. <laughs> the lights. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Let's keep the conversation light. My 89 is a, a crossover with the people from wow. the last Eclipse. chunk of 10. Oh. <laughs> the last 10 okay. that we covered earlier today. Let me look. Take a look, please. Mm -hmm. wow. It was my number 60. No, it's humble. It was my number 60 last year. So it's down to 89, i.e. I think it's pretty bad now. Right, <laughs> right. It is indeed Istanbul. Ah! And I think it's pretty bad now. The dice game. The dice game is not bad, yeah. but not as good as the board game, mm -hmm. which, while I think it's pretty bad now, I still <laughs> enjoy it. Um, and again, it has that thing in which the game, as soon as somebody achieves whatever the objective is, which is getting, getting these gems, a certain number of them, the game's immediately over, boom, you don't mm -hmm. score. Right. It's just done. And I don't want every game to be that, but it's refreshing when a game has a, uh, it's a race, basically. Yes. An end race. game trigger, it happens, that person wins, we're done, and you go, hmm, you outpaced me. Mm -hmm. And we're, that's it. Yeah. And this one manages to do that. A few different paths to victory, the modularity of the board and how you set it up is very interesting. It's always like, again, you, you have those moments, and it happens in almost every game, where you go, okay, so I go here, I go there, I go there, then I can go buy a gem. I need 15 coins, and of course you look down and you have 14. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so I'll I'll make my way back over here and burn a turn while I do whatever else. And it's those things that 
help you win or lose. You know, being really uh, effective and efficient. Really like this game. Do you find yourself at the beginning of a game kind of looking at what the board layout is and figuring out, okay, what, what, which thing am I going to try to go for? Yeah, I'm not that good yeah. at it. You know what I mean? Mm. I just kind of go like, ooh, I'm going to go do this thing. No, I'm, I'm, I, if I was smarter, I could probably do that and be like, oh, checkmate in, in 22, but mm. no. Um, still, I really enjoy it. That's Istanbul, my 89. It's nobody's business but the Turks. All right, my number 89. I thought we were going we to make it. I tried, I tried, not. okay. <laughs> my number 89 Almost. is uh, the only one of this series that's on my list. I was like, Z has already had two of them, and that is the gift series, but my game here is Yinch. Mm. So mm. This was on my children. original list way back in 2005 when I first made it. It was 85, so it kind of sticks around. Yeah, I would say so. I... Yeah, this one is such a great game to get five in a row, move the rings, flip things over. It's a mix of Othello and five in a row, but it's just, it's brilliant. This is the easiest of all the games to teach, but I think it also, it's, it's a classic. It's a modern classic, and I can use that word properly, unlike some people here. Mm -hmm. huh. Where and did you get those words? It's edible. They're two words. Yeah. So are a lot of brilliant phrases. You got to put them. <laughs> someone's got to put them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm talking about a game that came out 20 plus years ago, you're talking about games that came out 2022. You're like modern classic. Okay, so so let, let's let's analyze this. We've got time, right? We're only in the in the 80s here. Yeah. Do you think of uh, so what would be 20 years ago? 2004. Do you think of many things from 2004 as modern? Rest my case. Let's move on. It's got to be modern for me to do modern classic. You might be right. All Thank right. you. Yinch is my number 89. I like that argument. That was a pretty good argument. Mm -hmm. The People's Choice 89. Oh, that's interesting. I'll be thinking of that. Mm -hmm. Was 152 last year. 87 a year before that. 93. It's only been on the list for five years. And it is a follow-up to Mansions of Madness. And oh. This is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. I'm just very surprised this is this high I for the people. I really thought yeah. this was gone. Yeah. I Are they was a still flash pumping in out the pan. Yes. Are they still pumping out expansions for it? I would not say pumping out. Mm. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of surprised this one's on the list at all. Must be is it any good at all? <laughs> no, it's good. In fact, they came out with a new mode a couple years ago. That like lets you just explore more instead of like they're like, do you want to play story mode? Because the way the game is now is that you have this thing you have to do. You're moving around the map, and you really got to follow it. You can't really go off and explore much because you lose. This is based on those movies, right? With the the guy with the arrows and stuff. Why? Those movies came out like those are not modern. <laughs> they're not <laughs> modern movies. <laughs> they're a modern classic. Hundred no. percent. They're classics. Not modern classics. Look, this I game mean, is done. Uh, Wasn't Clark Gable in Lord of the Rings? I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I want games based on Blue Beetle or newer. <laughs> it does bother me, though. I Just just yesterday I saw a picture of all the Hobbit guys hanging out. Yeah, they're, I'm like, they're all old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Yeah. I know. It's been a while. Elijah Wood is doing commercials for Geritol now. Anyway, the People's Choice. Well, to be fair, <laughs> what's his name is doing commercials for Sony PlayStation. With that movie, oh wow! That, that one movie about um, the race car movie, the yeah, Gran yeah. Turismo. Right. I watched about 20 minutes of that movie, and I'm like, <laughs> "This is a great ad for Sony PlayStation." Like, Jeez. Very true. Oh man. <sighs> anyway, 89, your choice, <laughs> Lord of the Rings, Jerry Miller. Hey folks, Robert here, number 88, which incidentally is the same weight in pounds of One Foundations of Rome. <laughs> Pretty good. He's not lying. No. It's close, huh? Yeah. I think he was wearing blue in that picture. My number 88 is um, a game that I know you don't have as much esteem for. I don't think either of you do. But Camilla and I really like it. And this one is still holding firm. It's a little harder to get to the table. But my number 88 is a game with a horrendous box size, and that is Title Blades, but I like the game. Hate the box, love the game. I like that box. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They could have made it one of those 
like the Redwood box, the, 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 you know, the collector's edition. They could have done that, I think. But thank you, Steve, for your super Thank chat. you, yes. Um, Title Blades is a game that revolves primarily around dice and dice management uh, because you are going to be updating dice, which is something that I always like when you have a, a game that includes a way that you have custom dice that can be upgraded and you can see the path and the progression of, okay, this dice is gonna become this die and this die is gonna now, if I take it up another level, it's gonna mm -hmm. give me this these faces. So I like that mechanism. I like the, the worker placement. It can, it can feel very tense depending upon uh, what strategies people are going for. Uh, I like the reputation system in, up there, and um, the the one thing that is tough that that you know I know a lot of people bounce off of is the idea that you are kind of building up and building up and building up to face these monsters, and when you face the monsters, you lose your dice. Yeah, and that can be tough, but it's not unheard of, right? I've played other games where you build up, 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 and you go against a big bat, and then you kind of lose what you had, and you have to start again. I agree, but what keeps me from loving this is that actual reason and if it happens like the second the last turn it makes the last turn of the game not nearly as fun because you you have to like time your your final monster thing to be the last turn and sometimes yeah. it just doesn't work out. Sometimes it can be tough but but yeah there, there, there's so much that I like that's happening in this game I think the the production in some cases kind of worked against it because a lot of people saw this big thing they're yeah. like oh but the well, game light game this was right. slightly ahead of that curve of getting a big, big box that yes. has a light game in it. I and agree. People are okay with that. That's oh, true. This yeah, if you were getting a game this ride. size, mm -hmm. they expect it like campaign yes. monstrosity, and well, you play this game that's very accessible. That's going to be Title Blades too. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what it that is. It might not be that heavy though. No. I don't know. Right. 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 My point being, people expect to sort of be consumed by it, mm -hmm. and this is approachable. It's yeah. Very this is easy an approachable game. It's a family game. weight game. Family weight plus. Plus. Maybe. Yeah. For sure. All right. There's my eighty-eight Title Blades. All right. What's your 88? Can My you number go? 88 was 41 last year. Oof. It dro it's dropping like a stone, and it's from this designer who, um, it's, it's Bruno C Cathela or something. Who? I don't know. Uh, it's a game called Dice Town. Oh. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I would have thought that Dice Town would have been killed by Flip Town. They're different games. Um, what about Funky Town? Uh, if you take me down to <laughs> Funky Town, mm -hmm. I'll bring my copy of Dice Town. This is Town. such a okay. great game to bring it out is. to people who haven't played a lot of games. It's fun to teach them. Uh, yeah. It is fun. It's very boisterous with the clackety clacking of the dice. It has things that people understand, things like managing your money, right? I mean, mm. money, and, and then all the fun tropes of being in a western town, right? The holding up the bank and <laughs> stealing the money and going to the saloon and land deeds and, you know, building up the old west. It's got all those things in it, mm -hmm. and but they're handled, again, very plainly, very straightforward, in a very straightforward way. Um, this is a fun game. It's Yahtzee-esque mm -hmm. with then a few actions on top of that. There's an ex there's quite a few expansions, actually. The first expansion is actually one I'm not a big fan of because it takes a game that does move along at a nice clip and is easy to teach and understand and mm -hmm. takes it to a level that I think goes beyond that. It's an expansion I have no use for. If I want a heavier game, I'll play something else. I don't think it's as bad as you're saying. If I'm teaching... It makes it longer, though, but yeah. It's just, I mean, every every location then has a second ability. Which I like because now there's That's kind of like what happened in the Tokaido ex first expansion. Right, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, you've just moved yourself out of the target area I was using you for. Mm. And in that area you just moved to, you're getting outweighed. Mm. There's other games I'd rather do, you know, or play. Uh, my point being, this is a really good game out of the box. I recommend it a lot. Um, it's got some years on it now, but don't let that fool you. It is a modern <laughs> classic. Dice Town. Something so satisfying about just slamming those dice down. And you look. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's great. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. All right, my number 88 has been on my list for four years. Last year it was 73. It is a game that very few people play, and I would only play with two, I think, these days. because Ooh, of the Two people in the world? Which ones? <laughs> Who would you play am this I, am with? Am I one of them? No. That's me. Am I, number, am I one of them? No. Anyhow, it's Dominations. 
Why wouldn't you play with me? You've played with me. You taught me, I think. Is yeah, this... I did teach you. But yeah, you, you didn't like it that much. Too. No, I didn't like it, mm. you know, because the other player was you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I wasn't a huge fan of it either, and it was just the same situation, yeah. Anyway, Dominations is a civilization building game. It's more of a card tableau building game. Uh -huh. In fact, what you see here is the, the big, one of the biggest problems with this game doesn't look very good. No, right? it doesn't. I yeah. just finally just got those upgrade pieces. Oh, did you? Which were necessary. Yeah, and that's a problem. The little upgrade? sliders. The little upgrade? sliders are those, those little... Those were rough. They got trapped in the wood. They came with wooden <laughs> upgrade pieces, which yeah. I had to back, you know, to get them. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, though. The sheer amount of stuff that you can do in this game, the different ways of technologies, and yeah. it's, it's like an engine building game, really. I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's fantastic, but... It's one. It's my. It's almost like my 18xx. Yeah. Like, do you want to play Dominations? You don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What we'll else find you want to play? Else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you, DJ, for the super chat. The People's Choice 88 is mm. brand new, but mm. not really because it's a sequel, and we knew this would be on the list. Takao Two. There already is a Takao Two. No, this is um, brand know, new. Yeah, brand no, new. It's a year old now. It came out in December of 2022. It's a humongous game. Okay. The second half of the name is the same as the, the first game. Haven. Yeah. Oh, Frost Haven. Okay. I'm still it. thinking. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Frost Haven. Mm. Oh. Now, interestingly enough, I'm not... Frost Haven is... what it makes, like, worms? <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> So far, David, I think this game is settling down now. Mm -hmm. to, this is one of the, those, the few, and I, and I firmly believe this. This is one of the few campaign games that people play. Oh, yeah. Okay, you could tell me you played all these yes. 80 campaign games that come out of it. You're, you're a liar and them. you haven't. <laughs> you should but, be ashamed of yourself. But people who play Gloomhaven and Frost, David, they play through it, right? I yeah. know this. And so it's not getting a lot of people aren't talking about it, but I know people play it. The reason and why again, I, I made the list. The reason why I think that these Haven games are um, the Haven games. The Haven, the Haven family are the closest thing to a role-playing game in the board gaming sphere. Is because not just that there's thematic similarities, but right. the fact that Frost Haven and Gloom Haven is you get a dedicated group of people, yeah. and you schedule regular times. I mean, you could do that with any game. But you can, these but these are the ones where people, I see people doing it. are making people do it. They're yes. like inspiring people to do it. That's right, yes. Yeah, like we have a group of four. We meet every Thursday at 7 p.m. True. So. Yeah. It there really you go. is, yeah. You're number 88, Gloomhaven. Frosthaven. Frosthaven. Sorry. Wormwood. Hi, friends. I'm Ruel Gaviola, and I play board games and talk about board games all over the interwebs, including Rotto Runs Through, Tabletop Tonight, the Good Time Society, and the Tabletop Live Network. Now let's continue with the countdown. Here's number 87. He Ruel. creates content for 87 different channels. <laughs> he does. Ruel Including awesome. us right Including now. Right yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ruel. My number 87 is a two-player game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a two-player game uh, with a war theme. Which normally I'd be like, eh, and but eh. do Blitzkrieg. But my number eighty-seven is by Paolo Mori. It's Blitzkrieg, baby. Yes. He's, he's, he was annoyed. I yeah, guess. No, it. you guessed it so quickly. You're yeah. really good at uh, starting a war in twenty minutes. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, says World War Two in twenty minutes, and uh, that's about right. Um, is it thematic? Nah, not really. But but. It's thematic in the sense that you do feel, I think inherently, head-to-head -head battle games can have a war theme almost no matter what. Oh, sure. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and so this uh, kind of gives you that war game feel, but it's so simple. It's a tug-of-war game. If you've played Dogs of War, another Palo Mori game, much bigger in scale, you can see mm -hmm. the, the, the DNA there, and it's just so fast so satisfying, and especially, uh, you know, if you get really familiar with what those chits are, and there's not an, enough of them that it's hard to do that. I agree. You know this, what I mean? This is one of those things I know every chit you have. Yeah. And it's not it, like I'm a studier of it. No, and then, then that's really when these, this game comes to life, is when you each know what the other one has. You don't exactly know when it's coming out, but you have to prepare for it. It's just a really solid experience in a very, the, the length of a filler, but it feels like more than a filler. So, 
Really solid two-player design, and we're getting a lot of these lately. Yeah. You know, uh, this one and a lot of the salt and pepper games are doing a similar thing. Where yeah, you're right. It's just... The war themes are being utilized a little more lately. Yeah. I don't need a war game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could call this a war game, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I do think it's nice to be able to have these themes and utilize them and, and yep. again, sort of take a historical stroll through that without having to be a war gamer. Yeah. You know? I agree. I agree. Just like I think war gamers should have more themes about birds or worms. Or dragons. Or havens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, my 87 is a Warm game that somehow, <laughs> somehow wasn't on my list last year. I looked through. I couldn't find no? it. But I know it's been on my list in the past, so I don't know what happened there. Magic the Gathering, folks, okay? Why is it back on the list? Cult of the Why new? did it fall off? Lord of the sure. Rings. The Lord of the Rings, okay? Those movies are hot right now. <laughs> I just found out they made apparently extended editions of them. Have you heard of this? They're yeah. even longer. <laughs> I'm looking to see where Magic ended up on my list. I would love for them to adapt those films into books. That's a good question. Where, you know where what I mean? Magic's nowhere near my list. Anyway, Magic the Gathering is uh, really on the rise right now. And I did get some Lord of the Rings, and I did enjoy that set quite a bit. One of their best-selling sets. Actually, I think Lord of the Rings was the best-selling Magic mm. set ever. Really? I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, putting um, a million-dollar chase card in it doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt, and that's probably, unfortunately, going to yeah, lead to that. However, what Magic the Gathering hasn't had yet, and it will soon, mm -hmm. Fallout. Oh, come baby. on! Okay? That's why you can expect to see Magic the Gathering higher on next year's Top 100. Top 10? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Magic the Gathering, my number 87 for now. Mm. All right. My 87 has been on my list for eight years now. It was once as high as seven. Oh. But it has... Oh, the mighty have fallen. Well, no, I still really enjoy it. I just have, I don't play as much, but it's still do a good you? game. I do. 87? I know really? why it was 7 in 2020, because that's when I first played the Rise of Fenris expansion. And that brought uh, it all out. That was such a great experience. Hey, okay. worms. Scythe. Mm. Scythe. I really like Scythe, though. I think it's yep. a great game. I, I know a lot of people... It, it's, it's funny, because these games... These popular games get to a point where suddenly people are going, yeah, it's not a good game. I don't know why anyone likes it. <laughs> yeah, right? I hear that more about Stonemaier games than I hear about anything I else. Agree. Like, Wingspan, it's trash. What is, mm -hmm. I, I don't get it. Why do people yeah. like it? Why do people like Sign? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not even a... Blah, 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 blah. It's a great game. So yep. that's why we like it. it. Yeah, just because it's not the game you thought it was doesn't mean it's not a good game. You know, because this is another one that looks like a war game. Yes. And it... Could be, I suppose, if that's how all the players were approaching it, but it's not really, you know? It's not, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. It has a streak of confrontation in it. That's yes. about it. It has a threat of confrontation, yeah. a possibility of confrontation, but it's really about those boards. Yeah, and I really, really yeah, enjoyed it. too. So it's my number 87. Mm hmm. Your number 87 was 155 on the People's Choice Ooh, last here year. There we go. Because it was brand go. new, so just it's moving up. Okay. I was not expecting this one, but this is a really fun game, Planet Unknown. Oh, wow. This has got some very passionate fans. It, you know what, though? It's a, it's a, it's a polyomino game mm -hmm. that everyone plays at the same time. Yeah. And that part is just fun. Hmm. I, no, I, the, 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 the draw of the Lazy Susan is real, right? Not only is it a very cool component and functional, but it has a mechanical thing also that, that's tracks. very cool. Tracks, yeah. Tracks. Yeah, sure. You love tracks, Tom? I love tracks. Tracks well, upon, tracks upon, tracks, tracks is what I have. Axes. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, like a uh, grid. You love grids, Tom. You love the it, grids. There's nothing about this. I just, I, I'm trying to figure out where it is on my list. I don't remember where it showed it's, up. Look at the top ten real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get it out of me that way. Plan unknown, though. A great game. Your number eighty-seven. Brian from Office Dog with number eighty-six. Did he say he was from Office Dog while holding a cat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how it's done. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're getting that first game from Office Dog, which is a new offshoot brand of Asthma Day. It's yeah. coming uh, very soon, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you when it comes. Very nice. Here. We appreciate it. Really? Good to see him. 
Brian and used cat. to Brian used to teach me and Z a game every year. Every year, the, uh, on the Gen first Con. day of Gen Con. Mm, that's that was right. cool. Those were the good old days. That I haven't was, been doing. Those were the good old days, man. That this the, fool wasn't around. The modern classic days. <laughs> You, you, you he was gonna get, get out. out of his bag. Say, I, he, I was. Actually, <laughs> he was gonna go, but his yeah. back came out. The derriere did leave the cushion. I want to make I that clear. I noticed it. Okay. All right. And I appreciate the the usage of the word derriere. I had a lot of options, right? And I did, feel good about did. what I did. I, I'm glad you went. Francais. I have not done a great job of talking about differences. Pardon my so. French. <laughs> okay. Title Blades was down 31 for me. Uh, Bliss Krieg was up seven. This uh, next game, 86, is down 27, but uh, still still in my list solidly. This is my Vladimir Suchi game of choice. Last Will. This is Last Will. Oh, yes. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. all yeah. Mike's games yeah, now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, I, I still really like this as a midweight and and but but on the light end of midway game, it, it has such a easily understandable premise, and it is done with such whimsy and humor. Right? Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, worker placement, kind of a, a tableau type of a game, but it is just so simple to tell people. Look, here's what it is. You got a boatload of money. You got to get rid of all this money. You've got to get rid of this money, and the way to do it is by being ridiculous, going on a yacht, bringing your dog on a yacht, bringing private chefs and all this type of stuff. You want to spend as much money as you can, right? Buy these really expensive houses, sell them for nothing. They should make a movie on this. They should. <laughs> they should. They would make millions on Wait, this movie. I can't, you you mm -hmm. can use that same joke all day here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so dumb. Can we get through this without mentioning Brewster's Millions? No, Ross, apparently we can't. I didn't. Well, first of all, that's a... <laughs> Hey, I want to actually. I want to see a remake of Brewster's Millions. Mm -hmm. Not, I, I mean, I think the movie's a great, the, the the most recent one that's been made a couple times already. Richard Pryor, yeah. I would just like to see it in a modern setting and see how they did that. It would be classic if they did a modern one. <laughs> Last will, good good very choice. very good simple, choice. very simple present premise. Lots of fun. Yes, Kabuki Kid. Yes, we can get through it. <laughs> My number eighty six. <laughs> Somebody said that it looked like, you know, forget mm -hmm. it. Uh, my number 86 is a game that Mike Delisio taught me. Oh. It's a Reiner Knizia game. Oh. It's, I think, a modern classic. It's a game I taught you. You taught me, yeah. It was my 77 last year, so it's dropping like a stone, <laughs> but it's, it's hanging on, okay? okay? It's slipping into the water. Mm. You need to climb up atop your beast again. Wow, this is a great game. I just played this recently. This is Whale Rider. I just played this with my sons like a month ago. Really? Mm hmm. I haven't played it since it came out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did they like it? <laughs> they loved it. Yeah, Whale Riders is really good. It's got sort of a, an overreaching push your luck. It's like a really long push your luck curve. It's a pacing thing. It's yeah. a more of a pacing thing than a push your luck thing. And then a basic economic engine, an engine sort mm -hmm. of below that where you are buying things, that row of goodies refills randomly from a bag, storm tiles in that bag sort of start showing up and they're just dead spots. So eventually that line gets nuked. Mm -hmm. It's just garbage is what's left. Yep. And you need to know then to move on to the next port and buy things from there. But you don't have to wait until the, the entire port is nuked with just storms. You can just move ahead and get ahead of other people and start buying things before anyone else is even there. For cheaper. Get to the bottom, you turn around, and you come back up all those ports. And when you get all the way back home, in fact, if no one else is back yet, you just sit there and buy pearls. You're just buying points. Yeah. And and everybody else, then the pressure's on. Right. See, it's kind of like Tokaido a little bit. Only in the sense that you can't go backwards. It's a, yeah, no, I don't think it feels anything like it. Um, it's like a very simple set collection game with that one really cool idea on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's normally called the ratchet mechanism. <laughs> that's the one. That's what. That's the, what the world is all about. The ratchet system. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is Kanitsia's most ratchet game. Like that, what you throw a ratchet. Whale like Riders, <laughs> eighty-six. <laughs> all right, my number eighty-six is a crossover with Z's designer-wise. Oh. Only designer-wise. Oh, okay. Um, but you picked Magic: The Gathering. Mm, I will pick 
Rally. Uh, Robo Rally. No. Nah. Robo Rally was a game that I, I, I still like enjoy a lot, but it's so fragile. No, it's King Bunny of Kingdom. Worms. Oh. Bunny King of Worms. King. <laughs> That's Stegmeyer's follow up. Anyway, Bunny Kingdom has been on the list for seven years now. It was 64 last year. Still really enjoyed this game. Good, good drafting. I'm a big fan of drafting. I also think, Mike, um, make sure I didn't accidentally put the other one higher. I think at the end of the day, I like this one. Even uh, There's no polyominoes in this one, mm -hmm. but I like this better than Isle of Cats. Really? Um, yeah, I think I enjoy the choices in this one a little bit better. Hmm. But I get Isle of Cats. Sure, sure. I just the, the only thing about Bunny Kingdom that I don't love is the scoring. That's that's just really it. It's a solid game, but I I, I do like the scoring. I think it's really interesting. So that's my number eighty six. Your eighty six mm. people has been on your list since two thousand eleven. It was forty five then. It is eighty six. Was seventy nine last year. Wow. And it is Ticket to Ride colon. I have never played You're that up. version. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, oh like, I thought it was taking the right color. I'm like, like, gosh, wow. like, that's going to be an interesting map. That was <laughs> really something. <laughs> Take Drive Europe, which is definitely many people's favorite mm. version of this mm. game because it is the easiest one to get into and play. It's a very popular map. It has the stations, which help a lot. Um, right. Is this the one to introduce mountains? I don't remember. No. Or fairies. You're talking I mean. about the yes. Yeah, the, the fairies where you needed a wild for the spots yes, too. Yeah. Introduce that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it's just it's a solid one. I think this came out in two thousand. So Ticket Ride came out in two thousand four. I think this came out in two thousand five. It's almost twenty years old. Wait, didn't they just make the twentieth anniversary edition of Europe? No, that was the tenth anniversary edition. Yeah. Boy, my mind has gone. Well, the years have gone. I'm old. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. That's the 10th anniversary edition. But it's almost it's 20th anniversary is next year. Oh wow. Wow. Do you think we'll get a 20th anniversary edition that's twice as big as the 10th anniversary edition? Eventually, it'll just come with real trains. Do you think we're going to get a 20th anniversary edition of Ticket to Ride this year? Have they announced it yet? No, not yet. No, they have not. Interesting. Ticket to Ride colon <laughs> 20th anniversary. All right. Ticket to Ride Europe is your number 86. <laughs> Welcome to Rolling Dice and Taking Names. My name's Marty. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Tony. I got a, got a call. Hello? Oh, hey, Tom. Yeah, sure. I'd love to help. What do you want me to do? Just look to my right and say number 85. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack. There, there is, yeah. It. There are many levels. Wow, there. that's fantastic. Many levels. All right. Um, it's funny. My number 85 is a Ticket to Ride game. It's Ticket to Ride colon small intestine. My number 85. <laughs> that's the worst one. <laughs> it's so short. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's over that's before like you know. It's the express ones. You know, the little ones that it come snakes. out with. I don't like you it. You played a uh, Ticket to Ride. Um, Berlin, it's kind of like yeah, that. It's, yeah. yeah, it's basically like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> Der Kohlen. Um, my number 85 is actually a, um, a game that people think I don't like these types of games because I bounce so hard off a Turing machine. Okay, so it's, it's that same type of logic type of a game, but st instead of numbers, it's more... Um, it feels more, even almost more abstract. It, my number 85 is Tiwanaku. I don't know if either of you have played this. Mm -mm. No, because you recommended it. There you go. This is a really solid game wow. that is flown. Top 100, Mike. It has huh? flown under a lot of people's radar. But if you like those types of games, I think you would really like this. Actually, game. I meant to play it. Mihir was like screaming at me to play it at the retreat. It's great. He must it's, have taught him. It's from Sit Down, and it's not like their other games, right? It's right. not a real time game. This is a game where you are trying to use deductive logic to figure out where these crops are located, what types of crops, the size of them, because they follow very simple logic rules. And what's neat is it has this big kind of wheel that you put um, a little, uh, how would you call it? Just like a little piece of cardboard in the wheel and there's little windows. Okay, and, right. And, and so basically um, you are gonna be like, okay, I'm in this row and in this uh, column, 
I'm going to guess that it's this size of this crop. And you open the windows and you find out uh, if you're correct or not. Um, and so even if you're incorrect, it's always going to put what the correct thing is. But um, it, it, it's so cool. Are you it shooting so in the dark a lot earlier in the game? Earlier in the game, and then it gets better as you know more. A little bit, yet. sure, yeah, a little bit. That's that's going to be the case. But there's also you also have tracks, and so you're trying to in. you're incentivized to guess certain things because you get more points. Okay, okay. It, so, yeah, it's a really clever game. Um, it has tons of replayability. Mm. It's got different sizes. So if you want to play on a smaller map, you can. Or if you want to play on a larger map, you can. Um, beautiful production. I guess for me, I mean, it sounds good every time you describe this game, mm -hmm. but every time I see that picture or a picture like it, I'm like, it's not a looker and the theme sounds... Oh my god, it's gorgeous. I think the cover looks beautiful. I think that, like, grid with the... The, the different crops? The, the They're crop beautiful. The circle thing. I'm with him. I think the cover looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I think the game looks... Have you seen it on a table? No. I think you need to see it out, and then you can say whether... I mean, it, maybe, the, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't like the look of it, but I think it's beautiful. It has nice the screen The theme printed. is also so weird, like you're guessing at crop circles. Or there's there's you know? a be better you way to describe. You're, you're, there's Corn. a better way to describe the theme. There's a it's it's got a little bit I think of like a, a mysticism type of a thing okay. for it's okay. a it's a South American theme. It's uh, yeah, it's good. It's, okay. it's really good. All right, my number eighty five was sixty eight last year. Um, I really like this one. It's a campaign game, so it's a hard one to get to the table. But I'm still very much enamored with Vagrant Song. And, uh, oh, yeah. Vagrant Song is a gorgeous package. It has great stories, great, a great setting, mm -hmm. really neat um, boss battles is basically what this yeah. is. I, I guess boss battler is, is a genre now. Mm -hmm. We just call it that. Yeah. So this is that. I remember distinctly thinking the first time I saw this board, this is going to get so boring because it's always the <laughs> it's same. It's a combined to this board. It's yeah. always the same three train mm -hmm. cars. You know, we're not the same ones, but they all look the same. This is going to get really old, you know. But they managed to do so much with yep. the different Hanes, i.e. the bad guys, and then some terrain, what have you, on the uh, cars themselves. It's so cool. I love the characters. I love the mechanisms in this. This reminds me of when I first played, say, like, The Others. And I'm like, this is a big miniatures game. Mm -hmm. But the core is euro yeah. and really good and clean. And I can, you know, those gears, boy, they're turning. And it's, it's uh, you don't hear this engine working. It's so smooth. Mm. And I feel the same way about Vagrant Song. It's very, very clean and smooth. Every now and then, I do get hung up on a little rule of, like, wait, this guy moves how, where, what's happening? Um, but those are few and far between. I very much enjoy it. My number eighty-five, and they're mentioning uh, in the in the chat a little bit about you know it's a campaign, mm -hmm. but I believe that the uh, expansions that have already been announced, I think they were kick kickstarted or crowdfunded. Uh, I believe they allow you to do one-offs. Right, I haven't yeah. played very that. Obviously, interested in that. So. this yes. is actually my one hundred and one. Mm, really, it just dropped out, and I think a one-off thing would bring it back in for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I really mm. like it. Right, my ND85 has been on the list for three years, and it's Terraforming Mars, colon. <laughs> <laughs> Terraforming, colon. I haven't played that one either, John. <laughs> Ares Expedition, or mm. Ares Project. What's it? Ares, whatever, it's the card game. Ares Expedition, you're right. Yeah, this one still sticks around for me. So after what I thought was a somewhat disappointing dice version that came out this year, the Terraforming okay. Mars dice mm -hmm. game, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. And Terraforming Mars, which has been kind of supplanted for me by a lot of games like Earth and Earth. things like that. Mm -hmm. But Terraforming Mars, I still enjoy this one, if only because I still love the basic mechanism of the Race for the Galaxy. Poor Puerto Rico thing. Yeah. Choosing the cards. I love that mechanism. Mm -hmm. And this one lets me just do what I want to do in Terraforming Mars, which is get the cards. And so I just I find it a lot of fun. Feels like Earth in many ways, right? Yeah. It I really does. I really enjoyed this when it came out, but I just have not come back to play it. I haven't played it in a while. I'd love to try it again because mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Earth this past year, and yeah. this is this was sort of like that when it first came out. Okay. What about the people? 
And someone asked, what about the expansions? The expansions had nothing to do with my opinion. I like the, the one expansion. I don't care about the adding more players, and I don't care about the cooperative. I haven't played those two. Mm. But the one that adds new cards, for, that, was, that was fun. I yeah. enjoyed that. that. That did bring it back in, I guess. For the people, 85 is brand new to the list. Whoa. Hello. There's very few games, honestly, as we go through this, that are brand new. Yeah. To choice. Yeah. This one is a couple years old now, but it's one that you both raved about, and I finally got around to playing, and I also enjoy it's a follow-up to a bicycle game, but now we're going through time, oh, trekking through history. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think this game is going to be the, the shining star in the trekking se uh, series. Follow-up to a bicycle Wasn't game? Wasn't it trekking through no, oh, national parks? National I'm parks. mixing games up, sorry. You are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, yes. You had trekking the world in between, too. Which I haven't played either of those mm -hmm. games. I've only played this one, but this game is... Terrific. It really is. Yeah. I really enjoy this game. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was on my short list somewhere online. It's also a gorgeous production. Really and is. again, if you want a good family style game, yes. that's going to be give you some of that accident, accidental learning. Mm. It's going to give you some gorgeous productions. Easy to play, quick time frame. Oof, I love it. It's such a solid package. So that's your number 85, Trekking Through History. Number 84. On the periodic table, that's polonium. <laughs> so what's that used in? Name four things that the element's used in. Po? <laughs> no, polonium. I don't know anything about it myself. What's polonium? It's in, it's in boys, po boys. Um, <laughs> po. That's such it's a in, dumb. It's in tatoes. Po it's in tatoes. It's in lease. Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> police? Police. <laughs> Come Good on, man. Brad Patchett. <laughs> I understood what, what he was doing, but it's... Okay. It's in Paris? Go. Po What's Paris? your number 84? That's what they call it in France. That's oh, the name geez. of a good old board gaming show. Which one? Po Paris. Oh. With Tom and Z. Oh, man. Oh. With V and Z. Oh, V and Z, right. Yeah. <laughs> v and Z. Oh. <laughs> We've come a long way. Uh, my number 84 is down 26, um, but it's just a, another rock-solid Euro game uh, that has um, the ratchet system coined by one Mr. Vassal. It's uh, Glenmore 2. Glenmore 2 is a really, really good game. Where you played through every. I have not played through yet. every chronicle. You no. got to try all the chronicles, man. I have played through several of them, and and they're 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 really generally good. Well, right? they added more in the expansion. They did the in the expansion. Yeah, I know that's crazy. It really is. But but this is a, a game where you are going around this one way track, um, and you know it might be something you really really want a tile that you really really want, but. You're giving up the option to get things earlier, and, and the person furthest back is next in turn order. You've probably seen these types of things before, but you're drafting tiles that you're placing in front of you to, to, to kind of make up your own little uh, tableau area. And it's just so smart and clean. Um, Matthias Kramer, uh, or Kramer, I, I would assume is the, the pronunciation, uh, is, I think is kind of known for these types of, of designs, right? Where it's just... It's got some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you've got this other area here, this kind of sideboard where you're traveling along and trying to get these bonuses. I like that sideboard. Yeah. Though. It's a lot of fun. That, it's a that lot was of the fun. brand new part, right? Yes. Because Glenn Moore... Because originally Glenn Moore was just Yeah, the, Glenn Moore has been out for, you know, that was yes. an older game. Had just that thing, which I really do like the idea of doing a the ratchet system thing mm -hmm. in a in a loop. Yes, and you just sort of fill in the back. Yeah, it's kind of a fun, it, it fun, is. gamey thing. Mm -hmm. And then they added that sideboard, and of course, all the chronicles and yeah. everything. This is a good one too. Yep, I was just happy when it came out because it made Glenmore basically available again. Right, that's true. That was so hard to get yes. Glenmore. Yeah, it was a little uh, Aaliyah box, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this is a really solid game. If you like Euros, you really should check it out. It's good, good stuff. I like it. My number 84 was also in the 60s last year, 66. I guess I made some room up at the top. And mm. Everything in the 60s dropped by about 20 spaces. This one is Parks. My oh. 84. A wonderful, again, kind of fits into that... Uh, Tracking through history bucket, in which it is approachable, it's gorgeous, easy to play, has some set collection-y vibes to it, which I find to be a pretty comforting 
mechanical place to be. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people enjoy that. Set collecting is pleasing as a mechanism. You it know is. I mean? People it love is. gathering stuff. There's a reason why it's in 98% of games. It really is, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, recipe fulfillment and gathering yeah. stuff. Ooh, I got these things. I can spend them in here. And in this one, you are visiting parks. That's the idea. Or, or I guess, you know, walking from the trailhead to the mm -hmm. end of it and collecting things along the way. Very fun, easy to play, gorgeous production, like yes. I said. It's had a couple of expansions, which I also enjoy. Um, and you can get this one just about anywhere these days. You can go to Barnes & Noble and yeah. get it. It's, it's one of those that's readily available. I recommend it. Give it a go if you like this theme, if you want something that's pretty easy to play. My 84 Parks. All right. Good choice. By the way, Glenmore is my 122. Okay. Oh. So it's, it's close. Yeah, close. yeah. What about Parks? I like Parks. I just don't <laughs> love it. That's all. So 140-something? It's in the... Probably a 1 before the 140, but yeah. 1,000? <laughs> that still means I like it. So it wouldn't make your top 1,000. I don't... Man. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing. There's that is a, a bad thing, Tom. <laughs> not being your top 1,000 games is pretty bad. <laughs> that's not so terrible. Are you my top 1,000? All right. Anyhow, <laughs> my number 84 is a game that Z pushed me into playing. That's oh, right. I remember Many that. years ago. Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 7, right. 8 years. It's been on my list. It's in his top 100 for sure somewhere. Mm, don't, was, don't put words in mm. my mouth. It was 83 for me last year, 84 this year, and that is Targi. Oh, snap. Targi. I do like this. I I wish more games would have this. I love the whole worker placement, and you get the thing where they cross. Yeah. That's such a neat concept. I, I've seen it done in Almanac. Yeah. Uh, as on one of the pages, because right, Almanac yeah, has I all these different things. Right, I remember you talking about that. I would love to see more of it. It's just a, it's such a fun mechanism, and it's it's stressful, but fun. Like, every time I play Targi, when, when you take each turn, you're getting three things. Where you can put the two guys and then where they intersect, right? Mm -hmm. Or no, there's there's multiple intersections. I can't remember. There's there's you have three guys, so two places where they intersect. Yeah, right. sorry, so three things and two intersections. Yeah. But you're getting stuff every time. Yes, it's not like you get nothing, but you're sitting there and you put that that first worker and then you really want that one intersection and you're really hoping they don't mess that up. The mm -hmm. other person, you're sitting there trying to look at the ceiling. I just like that. It's it's ex and then they go there. And you're like. And they don't, they're not even trying to mess you up. No. They yeah. just want something else. Right. And you're like, okay, now should I, I should have gone to that row first rather than the column mm -hmm. or something to that effect. Yeah. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah, you it's, need to pivot a lot in this game. It's it very good. It is a great game. A modern classic. A modern For real, classic. it is. Yeah, it's a two-player only worker placement right. game. That's the thing. There's too. also it's not like, many of those. Wow. Your number 84 mm. has been on the People's Choice list for eight years straight. Although it's had a pretty big drop here. It was 40 last year. It was 22, 23, 21, 27, 35, 40 to 84. And I think wow. that's because a new version of it came out uh, last year. And that is Clank. Ah, so I think okay. Clank Catacombs might be splitting the boat. Sure, sure. Clank in space completely fell off the top 100 for people's choice. Yeah. But Clank is still pretty high up there. There's also the Clank Legacy. People like that, too. Yeah, right? yeah. But this one, such a fun game. Deck building, going through a dungeon. Well, that's actually, that is Clank, uh, normal Clank, right? I think that's normal Clank right there, yeah. It looks so much like Clank Catacombs, you know? Mm -hmm. I looked at it, I'm like, wait, because I just played Clank Catacombs not that long ago. I finally got around to playing it. Um, yeah, the thing about Clank Catacombs is you get to put out the tiles. And yeah, it, you build right. the thing as you go. It's really, really good stuff. Now, is Clank the, I've played Clank and In Space and Catacombs I recently played. The... The legacy one, is that cooperative or still competitive? Very competitive. Competitive still. That's okay. the Acquisitions Incorporated thing. Yes. Yeah. The second one to that is coming out this year. I thought there was mm, one that was year. a cooperative, but that's not a thing, right? There's no Clank co-op? Co I don't think so. Clank no. together? Clank together. Let's get Clank. Right now. <laughs> that is your number 84, Clank. Hey, everyone. I'm Zeb Schlesinger, and here's 83. <laughs> Zeb! <laughs> Zeb! Rocking that play to Z shirt. That's mm. right. That is right. All right, my number 83, let me remind myself, is up. 
14 spots. And this is another game that I feel like I'm probably one of the only people playing it. Tom introduced me to it. Um, I think this publisher has become, this is the publisher's first game, and I think they're getting more and more in the public eye as they release more games. This is called Shaolia. This is from uh, publisher Bad Comet, who has been doing things like uh, Life of the Amazonia was their newest yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That Wondrous Creatures is going to be coming out, um, which looks fantastic. This is a, it's not a, only a two-player game, but to me, this feels mostly like a two-player game. It you can play with three or four. It doesn't, it's not terrible at three, It's actually. not, no. This because is also it, one you've mentioned as solo is really good. Is that, am I thinking the of the solo right is, one? It, you, that's with the expansion. You can only play oh, okay, solo with the expansion. Okay, okay. It's, it's really a, 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 a bad Battler, card battler where you are trying to win in one of two ways. You're either trying to win militarily by knocking out the other yes. player's cards. There's a front line and a back line. Um, or you win through like a science type of a thing where you're moving up along a track. Science? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm with, stab them, stab you mostly them. want to go uh, military. But I've seen many people uh, pull off some nice science wins too. So it's uh, it, it doesn't do anything terribly innovative necessarily. You're basically buying cards from a market to improve your your you know your army or your your um, technologies type of a thing. But it, it has so many different variations. The the rule book basically has like probably fifteen different ways you can play the game. Oh I normally you know? hate that. Yeah no I, I but but I only play it the one way. I play it the one way mostly yeah. Which way? Uh, the just basic that standard, way? yeah. You buy cards, improve cards, yeah. attack mm. the other the other players. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I really really like it. <laughs> Eighty three, Shaolia, great houses. What are we What are we laughing at here? No, I'm laughing at him. And you. Oh, okay, mm. okay. My number eighty three mm. is from. The Blood Rage trilogy of games. I don't know if it's my favorite or not, but I maybe I don't know. This is Ankh is my 83. Well, we've covered the trilogy now. We we're have good. covered okay, the trilogy. Okay, we're done. You put Blood Rage on there. No, you put Rising Sun, Blood Rage, mm -hmm. Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Was 93 last year, 83 this year. Ooh. Not sure why it went up a little bit. Um, I really like this one. I think it's a... The, the main thing that hurts this game for me, actually, is the fact that the game is smaller yeah. than the production. And I would say significantly so, actually. Yeah, I agree, actually. It really this is. is. It the, feels like, like a chest Well, when almost. the pieces are this big. Yeah, you yeah, get this yeah, monstrosity, yeah. you know, and like your character is this big old thing. And the game feels like a fairly straightforward Euro game with, that gives you a big map, and the yeah. twist, the hook is you, you split, you, you break the groups off for area control, mm -hmm. which we've seen before in other games, you know. Um, I forget what's the game that uh, Mexica. Mexica does yeah. it famously. Yeah, the Wolfgang Kramer, Michael Kiesling game. Yeah, you sort of have a big group. You're trying to control it. You split them up. You do various things. You can hire these characters, these big miniatures. But that barely happens in the game. Yeah, right. Especially at my favorite player count, which is two. Mm -hmm. I think this is best at two, followed by three. And then the other player counts, I don't really like that much. Um or I, would, I guess I would avoid more than not, is I guess mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But I do enjoy this design. It's gorgeous. The game is smooth, plays well, has a couple of interesting twists in it, but it's almost traditional, you know, yeah, in a way. It, it um, is. I really do like it. Mm -hmm. If you want to check this one out, don't go nuts with the expansions. Just get the base game first, you know. Because like I said, it really is kind of a, it's a smaller game in a big box that hurts it a lot. Yeah. I'm still happy with it. I'm still glad I got it. 83, Ankh, Gods of Egypt. All right, my number 83 has been on my list for four years here, although it's been out since 1995. Oh, okay. my. This is my guilty pleasure game. Mm. And the one I collect every single card. I have all the cards except for like Over, six now. Well, you need a... Overpower. Overpower. You, beware those last six cards. There's but, some, there's some uh, hologram... Batman, they're like, they're like incredibly expensive. I don't care if I have them or not. Anyway, you need those. Cards. I do not. Got to have the holograms. What do you, you mean? You don't. Anyway, Overpower a game I like to the point where I still get cards, like custom cards for it. I have thousands of Overpower cards. Two player superhero game. I just find it very enjoyable. I don't even. I, the one thing about it that I really like is that whole venturing system. 
which I have yet to see used in another game. I think it's a brilliant design. Hmm. Um, basically, we're about to fight each other with cards back and forth, and we bet cards based on how good I think our hand is. And you can fight it out, but you can also concede at any point because you realize, I, I don't, I'm going to take too many hits, mm -hmm. so I'll concede and you'll win the cards, mm -hmm. the mission. I like that concept because... Have you played Blue Moon? What if you don't concede? What happens? Well, no, then you play it out to see who wins and someone's going to win or not. But if I think you're going to crush me on a turn, I'll just concede, take the laws of mission, but at least the hits and your whole hand's gone. So if you have an amazing hand, you, you'll bet really high to, to, to make your opponent stay in. Also, if you bet over two, every card you bet over two, the other person draws an extra card. Okay, right. I remember mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, mm. it's, it's, it's interesting. I like it a lot. So. Okay. That's my number 83, it's Overpower. Blue moon. Yeah. So. It's, uh, blue. People's Choice 83 has been on the list for four years. Okay. It was 42, 32, 36, and now it's dropped to 83. This is a pretty significant drop, that actually. Is. And uh, I wonder if it's just because it's maybe it's currently out of print, and this is Isle of Cats. Or the Isle of Cats. I didn't think it was out of print, even. Well, I'm just... No, I think you can buy all... I think these are all available on his site, at least. Huh. Yeah, that's surprising. I'll tell you what. The, the, the one that came out last year... The Race to the Raft. ...was just not very well received. Some no. people liked it, because people like stuff, but yeah. it was just... It was a very You're different right. game. You're right. That may have, like... Taking some of the shine off of this for some people, I think it's still a really good. No, I think it's a very game, good game too. Polyomino game, yeah. Yeah, drafting polyominoes, and people still really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it's now we need a space cat promo for it. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> space cat. The Isle of Cats. But I get why people like it. Mm -hmm. so it's 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 a very very good polyomino game, and it's still ahead of uh, what's the one we just mentioned, Planet Unknown. Sure. That's true. Would you like to take bets on if Plan Unknown will pass it next year? It might or might not. Next year? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, this I don't think so. cats. It does have cats. It does have cats. There weird, you go. Weird looking cats, but mm. cats nonetheless. Cats! You're number 83. Hi, I'm Chris Kirkman from Dice Ate Me, and this is game number 82 on the countdown. Yep. All right. Chris like, right to the point. I appreciate that, Chris. I appreciate that. He's he right. doesn't appreciate it, apparently, if you go along. So read into that what you will. No. My number 82. <laughs> <laughs> that has been ignored. I'm wow. not going to even acknowledge your shade. Is uh, down quite a bit. It's dropped uh, 35 points. At 35 places, I should say. Well, Sorry. 35 points is yeah. just a down. 35 points. This is, wow. Yeah, that's right. Used to rate it a 9. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it's a negative. Do the math for me real quick. 21. Like, he's looking at you, not me. Oh, I stopped listening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My number 82 is Vindication. Oh, um, great game. It's a great game. Oh, you know, this is the one you taught me, Tom, right? Yes. I yeah. I remember. Both, um, both of these are the same game. This, this dropped off because... Again, this is a game that is in a box that is far too large. It takes up way too much space, and it's it's not that big of a game, right? It's mm -hmm. it's essentially mm -hmm. a tile placement game. Not even tile placement because the tiles are out there. You're moving amongst these tiles and you're converting cubes. That's really what it is. It's cur cube conversion. It is very abstract, remarkably abstract. Now they they. Orange Nebula, the, the publisher, did a great job at infusing some theme into what is essentially a very abstract, very Euro game. Sure. Um, because they do such a great job with their graphic design and their look. But this is one that I feel like the production almost hurts it for me. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to keep these big boxes in games that don't really require those big boxes, if that makes sense. Um, but it's still a game that uh, I like playing at conventions. I like playing other people's copies of it. Um, and I think it does some really smart things. You're not own it? Is that why you say other people's copies? No, no. Again, I called recently. Uh, I recently called a lot of games. And the thing that you can say most common among them is that they were my largest boxes. Sure. Um, so, it doesn't mean I don't love them. You don't have to own can, every game you, you love. You store 80 Japanese games in this box. That's right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, and I, I'm telling myself this. I'm not telling you this. You don't have to own everything you like. You know, because I have the collector bug. I'm trying. I'm true. I am too. Uh, but I, I, I made some hard cuts this year. Really hard cuts. And Vindication was one of them. But... 
Doesn't mean it's not a splendid game. My number 82 is Vindication. Also, you know, if you go to Dice Icon, you can play it in the library. Right. So that's an, that, that's that a, huge, a huge thing for me there, yeah. All right, my number 82 is a party game. Yeah, uh, parties. Wait, what was the last party game you did? I did just one. Has yeah. been the only party game I've had on the list. Mm -hmm. well, I don't think you'll have a ton. I won't. Yeah. This is uh, one that gets a lot of love, has a billion expansions. It's Dixit. Dixit is my 82. It was 84 last time. It lives around this area in my top 100. Mm. Uh, it's an easy one to play with just about anybody. It comes out with the family uh, a decent amount. As much as I care to see those people. Um, but I do enjoy it. It's gorgeous. The expansions have helped a lot keep it fresh. And then just kind of mixing up the way in which you play. You know, giving yourself silly rules or just, oh, this time we're only doing one word, not no mm. sentences. Oh, this time you have to tell a story, whatever. Uh, I really enjoy this one. Dixit is uh, beautiful and so fun to play, so easy to play. My 82. No, I don't, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but remind me, did you like Stella? Did you not like Stella that much? I like Stella. Okay, okay. I thought yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, I like Stella. Stella is a game in the Dixit universe that yes. does a lot of similar things. So, okay. Also known as our universe. No. No, Dixit's no. not in our universe. Are you kidding this, me? This, this exists on planet Earth. If on you're on drugs. Planet LSD. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, question for you. Yes. Um, I well, no. I, you were talking about Dixit Stella. I feel the way about Dixit Stella and Dixit as I feel about as you feel about smartphone and mobile markets. Got it. Like Dixit Stella, I'll be like, we got three, four people, done. Okay. I have five, six, Dixit. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can see I that. Agree with that. I can actually. totally see that. Yeah, I would agree with I that. I very much agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. My number eighty-two has been on the list for six years. Last year was forty-eight, and this is my. Only, mm -hmm. I think. Actually, I don't know if the other one made it or not. Game. Kinesia game. No, Garfield. Is this my oh. only Garfield game? This is one of them. I don't know if there's more than one, but this is, I think this is the only one that made my top 100. I like them all a lot, though. And this is Raiders of the North Sea. Mm. I don't know if the other one's made it. Architects is that the one that's getting remade? No. no. Raiders of the North Sea was remade as Raiders of... Scythia. Scythia. And you could put that in this slot, sure, too. Sure, sure, sure. I like the... The look of Raiders of the North Sea better. Too. Raiders of City is a little bit better for sure of a game, unless you had the expansions to Raiders. Right. Whatever. Yeah, One yeah. or the other. Mm -hmm. They're the both good. I love the idea of put a worker down, take that action, pull a worker off, take that action. Yep. It's a great system. Um, it's funny. It came out at a very similar time to um, the fishing game that does the same thing. Oh, Cold Water Crown or whatever? Yeah. I think it's what it's Those called. Those came out at very similar times. Yeah, well, this one, this one, I, I still think is just a fantastic game in it that is. series. I'm very curious to see the remake of Shipwrights. Me too. It's going to be a very different game. So, well, yeah. it's got to be. It has to be, yeah. But Radars was fantastic. Your number 82, people, has been on the list for 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 years. Oh, Last year, whoa. It was 95, it almost fell off, but it, it scratched its way back in. And I think several expansions came out for this last year because several expansions come out every year for this deck builder. And that is Marvel Legendary. Ooh, Still on the list wow. after all really? these years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe time to let it go. Wow. What, you're telling people to not like something? Maybe time to let it go. <laughs> wow, Mike. <laughs> wow. Really? It is I'm interesting how the other but, legendary games have all yeah, died a right. horrible death. And Marvel Legendary just keeps on trucking. It, it does. But I do wonder how many people play it rules as written. I don't know, understand that. Where you have a winner in the cooperative game. Oh, oh, no, oh it's yeah. Like in the oh, it's not like that. Maybe that's why, yeah, because that was always my least favorite part of Legendary. Actually, I was just talking to Wendy about this. We have those in the Dice Art Library of two giant wooden cases with like 90 characters, whatever. Mm. I'm going to just buy the box for Marvel Legendary. Yeah. Keep the characters in that box and then pick and choose another 10 right. or 15 characters and that's it. Because it's 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 very unwieldy when you have everything for it. <laughs> sure, yes. sure. But I honestly thought this would take a dive off the list because I thought Me Marvel too. Champions mm -hmm. would. I mean, they're very different games. Yeah. But Marvel Champions in this series that's a wild comparison. Marvel Champions. They're both. Why is it wild? They're both competitive, competitive Marvel card games. They're both, co they're both or cooperative, cooperative Marvel, Marvel games. card games. 
and they're both stored the same way. I just saw a guy at the gaming meetup on Saturday who had a big wooden case, and I was like, oh, it's Marvel Legendary. No, it's Marvel Champions. He had yeah. all the stuff. It looked really cool. Hmm. Okay. So that is your 82. Okay, this is it. This is what we've all been waiting for. The 81st best game of all time. Here we go. <laughs> wow. I don't, that's the one. That, you you really stop, built that up. Uh, you can stop watching now. That's it. That's all we need, the 81st. You may you may potentially hear some games by Jay Cormier in our lists. Yeah. It's possible. And the People's Choice 81 is definitely on Z's and probably on your list, too. Okay. All right. Okay. My number 81 is actually up 19 spots, and that's because uh, I've played it a bit more this year. There's a, a small little tiny expansion that came out for it that I really like. Uh, I think Camilla liked it even more than I did. I think she gave it a 9 for this little expansion. My number 81 is Old Trey. This always shocks Z because he didn't like it as much. It's an Antoine Bowser game. It is a cooperative mm -hmm. game that definitely has... The Ghost Stories play. DNA. I gotta play this game. Um, it's got a little. Yeah. It's got a yeah, little bit of a. List, so um, no. It's got a little okay. bit of a of a story element, um, but it ha it's basically follows a similar formula where you've got basically a tower you're defending for the most tower part. Tower defense. Okay. That, and you've got people, you know, the the people attacking you from all four sides. Okay. And you're trying to put out fires and, and, and Fire all of dousing. these things. You got dousing of fires. Um, and I just think that this is such a beautiful package because it's done beautifully by Studio H and the art by Vincent Dutre is gorgeous. Mm. Um, I like the idea of these chronicles. You have uh, mostly what they call the long chronicles, but some short ones too. But even a long chronicle is not going to take you more than 90 minutes. Um, little kind of tweaks to the formula I think it is so cool. This new one, which I said is a deck of cards, is the undead, basically. I thought that expansion was very, very good. To oh, be good. Fair. Good, good, good. I thought the expansion was very nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like this. I like this game. I don't love it. I yeah. think it's a little. The cadence bothers me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you feel like you don't get way, to do enough in your turn. Yeah, in the same way that some like Fantasy Flight uh, Arkham games mm -hmm. bother me a little bit, like you know Eldritch did it. Arkham yeah. Third Edition does it, where they're like, take two actions. They can't even be the same action. Mm -hmm. Now let the bad guys do these six <laughs> things. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna get got. Let but, me do something. This game feels like like that. Unlike Ghost Stories, this game feels it doesn't feel unfair to me the way that Ghost Stories can that. sometimes feel that. unfair. I like the difficulty. The difficulty is there, and there are easy ways to, you know, mitigate that one way or the other. But um, it doesn't feel as soul crushing to me sure. as. Uh, Ghost Stories can. So, my number 81, Old Trey. My number 81 is also a cooperative game, but one that no one seems to play or, well, it's hard to get now, I suppose. No one has cared about, ever. Mm. Uh, I think I might be the only person who has ever publicly hey. talked about this. <laughs> ever? Wow. Wow. Certainly right. on the Dice Tower. Well, that's, that's different. And it's Ever been on your world. list for... <laughs> it's been on my list for a long time. Um, it's come and gone, I believe, because it wasn't okay. on my list last year for some reason. Anyway, Witch of Salem is the one I'm talking about what? here, okay? Aren't they remaking this? I hope so. I would love for them to remake it. I, I really thought I heard that somewhere. Really? How about Michael, getting your hopes up? Yeah, I don't know. That'd be great. I have this copy, so I don't care, but I think more people should have a chance to experience this game. I really do. I just mentioned Arkham, and this is... Eurogame Arkham. Mm. It has that theme. Actually, okay. it's based on a novel, a German novel, apparently, that kind of has a you know Cthulhu Mythos theme. But it is this cooperative, move around locations, gather tokens, and then you can use those tokens for their abilities or collect them and fight the old ones. If you have the right tokens, you can repel some, not the old, not the great old ones, but like some baddies that show up in town. It's got a lot of little clever ideas in it. Like, for example, every player has a deck of cards which has the locations in town. And when you play one, I go to the, uh, I don't know, the library, and you go there, that card is not in your hand. You can't go there again. You eventually need to come back to one location at, the, of course, the most inopportune time <laughs> and pick them all up again. And little things like that that stack on top of each other make for a very enjoyable 
very tough sometimes cooperative game. Hmm. It has the one famously dumb rule in which you look at a portal, whether a portal opened up in town, you look at the back of it, it shows you either a portal or nothing, and you put it back face down and you're not supposed to tell people what's there. It's really, really stupid. <laughs> you do not need to play with that rule. You can just flip it over on the board. The game is not suddenly easier. <laughs> it's just less dumb. <laughs> Uh, you will still struggle. I agree on that. Less dumb. I've never played it without that rule. That rule, like, single handedly made me dislike the game. Yeah, you really, really don't need to worry about it. Uh, the game is still tough and fun. I really do like it. You so. know how they have new short descriptions on BGG for games? If yeah. they didn't just use. Can you bring the box back really quick? If they didn't just use this little thing under the title, that's all you need to know about the game. Brave Arkham Detectives Battle the Elder Evil. There's yeah. your short description. Yeah, really, it is. It and a is. cloud of toxic farting. Toxic, yeah. toxic farts, baby. Unlike the, uh, the non-toxic, beautifully smelling farts. If Cthulhu yeah. farted... It would be, pro it would be uh, <laughs> like potpourri. It'd be like a storm, right? Like <laughs> of untold uh, disturbance. Well, look, uh, you were the one that was closest El to uh, Cthulhu. You were That's the one. came from. Yeah, you were the one that was closest to Cthulhu's, uh, shall we say, rift Derriere. when we played. Uh, you would know yes. better than anybody else. Oh, True. All right. My number 81 is uh, an, another overproduced game, but I, and this one, I literally did just get the upgrades for it. Really? Um, and I'm really excited. And that is Wonderland's War. Oh, you didn't have the upgraded pieces for this? No. They just came out. No, no, I had them. They oh. just came out with the bases for the heroes. Oh, that's right. And for the characters. Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah. It's almost that's necessary really, because yeah. I'd be like, who's who's is that anyway? That's one of the few flaws from the from the production of the, the game originally. Yeah. So the thing is, Wonderland's War is a game that's not perfect, and yet I love it anyway. Yeah. It's definitely a little longer than it needs to be. It's definitely it is. a little overproduced and. The pulling from the bag sometimes is a little longer than it needs to be. Mm. The players' boards didn't seem to be balanced, although I just did get two more player boards, too. So, so far, I'm you're wondering. really selling it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, but despite it all that, it overcomes those blast. things. It is fun. I love the ratchet mechanism. I love the... Ratchet, baby! I love the uh, um, the area control, and I love pulling from the bag. It, and I like the Alice in Wonderland theme. Yeah, I do, too. It works really well here. And Manny Trumbly's art doesn't hurt either. Yes, I think... I think he's in my top five. He's getting up there, man. I, he, he's he does really good. That, the, the stuff he did on the Marvel Dice Throne is incredible. Yeah. Oh, that person. Okay. So Wonderland's War is my number 81. The I've never played this. It just... I don't... Here's I the thing. I don't even know think if I would like it. it. Yeah, I think you'd know if you'd like it just based on what you've seen. Sure. Yeah. Now, the People's Choice 81 has never been on the list before, which made me go back and double check because... I don't know how. You guys were literally just talking about the game a minute ago when you were talking about Cthulhu and his mm. obnoxious butt Booty smells. butt. <laughs> Booty butt explosion. Booty Elder butt. gas. Your Someone number said. 81 is Cthulhu, <laughs> Death May Die. Whoa! Have you never been on the list before? Not people's choice. That's pretty wow, wild. Wow, that is. I agree. I thought this, this is a fairly popular game. Yeah, it's got a big Kickstarter that just happened, uh, I don't know, last year. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why maybe it's in it people's it back mind. In maybe, people's heads, yeah, yeah. Well, I know Oof. you both really enjoy this game a lot. Uh, yes, yes. This is too low. <laughs> this is yes. But I'm glad it's on the list. I'm glad it's on the list. I'm glad. I guess I made it on now. But yeah. uh, this game, to be fair, has been a slow burn for both Mike and myself. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's been a slow burn maybe. for everybody. Yeah, it, the game was not what I expected it to be. Right. And it's so good. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, folks. That is it for today. That's it? We're done. We, we're 20% through. <sighs> Here's the thing, folks. We're doing this every day this week. Watch. You'll be able to take a picture of Mike each day. His, look how immaculate day. his hair is. No, he's gorgeous today. On Friday. It's he's going to look like a wreck of a man. Okay? <laughs> he's going to look like his character from Vagrant Song. I love those promos, man. Yeah. Oh my God, those hates from Vagrant Song. That's very good. I do look very, very handsome in that. You are, uh, you are dappish. Thank well, you, DJ, for the super. You're not, you're not a slouch either. Yeah. I mean, you've got some, you, you, you've got some, some flava going on right I there. I got Tom, some, and I'm, I'm here. I'm Tom's made there. of the finest yeah. of miasmas. Why is my <laughs> mic falling over the place? Okay. I don't know, but yeah, you've been doing a lot of mic adjustment over there. I have been. Okay. Well, here's the deal, folks. Like I said, we we'll back 
Check out the Dice Tower Kickstarter, DiceTowerKickstarter.com. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to back us, we really we like appreciate to get the support. That fund it so we can, well, have jobs for another That year. would that's be always, nice. It would be nice. To, I do like this job. That. It would be nice to keep it, yeah. So uh, that's it. So until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun. See you tomorrow.